Hello again, everyone. Welcome to another edition of the Awake Nation News for Tuesday, January 9th, 2024. I'm David Zublick. And I'm Penny L.A. Shepard for the Awake News. We've got the scoop for you. We do, we do, we do. And you can find us at the Awake Nation News on YouTube. And when you find us, please don't hit don't forget to hit subscribe. Not, not don't hit it. Please do hit it. <laughs> now, we promised you that we were going to uh, bring you the another Ron Jeremy, Jeremy accuser who sets who sues Sunset Strip Restaurant. The lawsuit alleges the restaurant owners knowingly allowed Jeremy to assault female patrons. And I could just take so much of this guy who's just a total freaking porno sicko oh, that now man. has no memory of anything. So that's why I kept just putting him to the bottom of the barrel because he is, you have to scrape the bottom of the barrel to get to yes. rock from me. We do. A, a key clue in the Alaska Airlines blowout turns up in a backyard. A door plug near the back of the aircraft ripped off the jet shortly after the flight took off from Portland Friday evening. A section of an Alaskan Airlines flight that ripped away shortly after takeoff was found late Sunday. Here's a timeline of what unfolded following the aircraft's mid-air incident. And also, I do want to I do want to put a little aside there. My first handler, Darrell Ellis, I won't say his last name. <laughs> I almost did. You almost got it. Um, he went into manufacturing parts for airplanes, okay? So here's just a little thought I want to throw in there. If that fault, if that part that they manufactured was defective, how many people might die from that when it gets put into a plane? Just well, a bunch of seven thirty sevens are being recalled. They're saying they're taking because they're not well, You know, things are blowing out, windows are blowing out, engines right. are dying. What the know. H? This is like some outer limit stuff. A uh, Florida GOP finally acts as party chair facing rape investigation. Everybody's getting in on the rape train. The Florida Republican Party has voted to expel their chair weeks after stripping him of his authority and salary because he was stripping other people. Florida Party of Florida, uh, sorry, it said Florida Party of Florida Chairman Christian Ziegler. Addresses attendees. His name is Christian. Seriously. Oh, my God. Farthest, farthest from it. <laughs> oh, my God. At the Republican Party of Florida Freedom Summit, Saturday, November uh, 4th. So that's going to mess with your mind. You know, what's your name? Christian. Jonathan Majors speaks out on assault conviction, maintains he never hit a woman. Former Marvel star because he wants his Marvel gig back. Uh, yeah. Spoke for the first time since his March 2023 arrest, claiming he doesn't know how his former girlfriend, Grace Jabari, sustained her injuries. Oh, that's a good one. I like that one. I don't know <laughs> how, what happened. French actor Samuel Thies, I hope I'm saying his name right, accused of rape by crew member on a new film he directed. So it's either Thies or, or The Is or it's Thies. Uh, Andrew Tate says his assets have been returned after appeal. The controversial social media influencer claimed $27 million was to be returned to him by the court in Bucharest. And he, Andrew so you're Tate saying he had his assets handed to him? Yeah, he had his assets handed <laughs> Andrew Tate, he's somewhat of a misogynist and he was running a sex cult, but he's probably going to get away with it. Andrew Tate left and his brother Tristan are being investigated for alleged rape and human trafficking in Romania. And I, I've heard this guy speak. I, I was very, you know, remiss that I, I believe Tucker Carlson hosted him. I'm not sure on that. So please don't come and uh, attack me because I, I misspoke. <laughs> I have to look it up uh, later. Elon Musk criticizes WSJ reporting on its use of illegal drugs. So here's the the flashback to the uh, story that we reported on in response to a journal article, the billionaire said he hadn't tested positive for drugs. And if drugs improved his productivity, I would definitely take him. So I'm kind of saying like he, he probably did. I mean, he did. Okay. So boy who died in custody was taken off suicide watch hours before a joint fatal accident inquiry is investigating uh -huh. the deaths of William Brown and Katie Allen at Polmont Young Offenders Institution. William Brown and Katie Allen were both found dead in their cells in separate instances in Polmont in 2018. David. All right. Another woman has filed a lawsuit against a West Hollywood restaurant alleging the establishment intentionally created a dangerous and hostile environment and allowed female patrons to be abused and sexually assaulted by former porn star Ron Jeremy. 
the plaintiff who filed an anonymous Jane Doe 7105 alleges that the Rock and Horse Inc., owners of the Sunset Strip restaurant Rainbow Bar and Grill, was not only aware that Jeremy, Jeremy was assaulting patrons, but continued to facilitate, conceal, and ratify his illegal behavior. The lawsuit is the fourth of its kind, following three other lawsuits by unnamed women who also claimed the restaurant allowed Jeremy to assault them. Representatives for the restaurant did not immediately respond to a uh, for a comment from the uh, Rolling Stone, whose article this appears in. The suit obtained by Rolling Stone also alleges that 25 unnamed individuals referenced as Doe's 1 through 25 were negligent and responsible in an actionable manner for Jane Doe's injuries. Now, here is the story about Dron Jeremy. If you don't know who the hell this guy is, I mean... Okay, I did not know his last name was Hyatt. That's an interesting name. You, uh, like the Hyatt Hotel, you're thinking? If that's his real name. Maybe that's his porn name because he uh, went to all the hotels and well, filmed porn stuff. Yes. <laughs> Born Ronald Jeremy Hyatt. The former porn star has been accused multiple times of, you know, why would, this is what I don't get. I, it, and and I, I, and I hate to do an aside here, but I have to. If you're in the porn industry where you get to have all the sex you want and get paid for it, why do you rape people? I don't understand uh, it. You know, because I, it's, you're it's, a disgusting human being? Well, <laughs> I get, you know, yeah. But, you know, you know, <laughs> but, but, I, but I'm going to say this and, and look. Because there's a you know, thrill in that. Because the thrill uh, of the rape is the control over someone who does not I want guess, to uh, be guess, with well, you. I guess I wouldn't understand that because that's not my personality type. I don't watch, right. I don't watch pornography. I would never participate in it. But um, I would even say that some people who are in that industry are there, you know, prurient interest or not, to make a living. But they don't go around raping people. I mean, there's plenty of porn stars who don't rape their anybody. You know, they just right. do their job. They show up. They get paid. They go home. You know, whatever it is. This yes. guy. Is the, but this guy must have been just a regular creep. Anyway, uh, he was accused multiple times of forcible rape, assault, and sexual battery by women aged 15 to 51. So he's even involved in some underage stuff going yes. on. In 2021, Jeremy pled not guilty to 34 counts of sexual assault over a 23-year period. That's crazy but was declared not competent to stand trial because of an incurable neurocognitive decline. He lived in a California mental health hospital until November 2023 when he was released to a private residence because of his deteriorating health. During Jeremy's criminal trial, prosecutors told a grand jury that at least eight of Jeremy's assaults took place at the Rainbow Bar and Grill. Representatives for Jeremy could not be reached, but the former adult entertainment actor had repeatedly has repeatedly denied the allegations of sexual assault and rape. These allegations are pure lies or buyer's remorse, he told Rolling Stone in 2017. I have never and would never rape anyone. According to the lawsuit filed Wednesday, Jane Doe 7105 visited Rainbow Bar on a night out with friends in mid-2013. The woman alleges that while in the restaurant, Jeremy greeted her and said he wanted to show her something. Oh, he took a look at this. Which she assumed was either memorabilia what? or a quick tour of the landmark location. Instead, she claims she was led through her kitchen into the private employee's restroom where Jeremy exposed Seriously, himself. I'm just going to say this. Okay, if somebody says, I want to show you something, really? I would not be thinking he wants to show me memorabilia other than it's his old junk that he wants to show. Yeah. Me. You remember when the line used to be, I'd uh, like to sh uh, show you my etchings. Right. Artist. While right. in the restroom, Jeremy allegedly pressed himself against her while saying, you know, you want it and you know, you want to touch it. Isn't that a rap song? I don't know. I don't I listen to rap. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. <laughs> The uh, plaintiff, you know you want it, and you know you want to touch it. The uh, plaintiff describes her emotions as terrified and horror struck. 
but she struggled and was able to escape the bathroom, after which she told her friends and fled the restaurant. Really? Attorney Gemma Dunn, who filed the complaint on behalf of Jane Doe, you're done. told Rolling Stone that the lawsuit is an attempt to seek accountability from those who enabled Jer Jeremy's alleged acts. Those who perpetrate sexual assault are not alone in the burden of responsibility, but those who stood idly by and enabled those assaults to occur are equally to blame, she says. We are proud to stand by our client in her pursuit of justice and accountability against those who empowered her assailant. The plaintiff is seeking damages for physical and mental pain and suffering, which the suit claims will continue in the future and may lead to future medical care. I have told my story for a decade. Those that know me know this, Jane Doe tells Rolling Stone in a statement. When a friend reached uh, out because she saw two women came forward, I knew in my heart that I had to help those women and any others thinking about coming forward. I am doing this for all of these victims as well as a younger version of myself that didn't have a voice. Wow. In other news. A key clue in the Alaska Airlines blowout turns up in a backyard. Can you imagine? What if it was like a wing or something? You look outside and then a wing and a prayer. There's a wing outside your door. Yeah. A door plug near the back of the aircraft ripped off the jet shortly after the flight took off from Portland Friday evening. So here's the story. Portland, Oregon, a 63-pound foot-long panel that blew off an Alaska Airlines plane in midair was found late Sunday in a backyard, giving investigators a key clue as they try to piece together why a gaping hole opened midair in the plane's side. You know, some of it could actually be espionage or sabotage right, right. on behalf of the manufacturers. The hunt for the door plug <laughs> sounds like a great Great novel. The hunt for the door plug drew in neighbors, <laughs> local law enforcement. As, as, as opposed to Ron Jeremy's oh, story, which no, is no, with no, a hunt for a, hunt for a, butt, hunt for a butt plug. <laughs> I knew that was going to be. I know you didn't want me to, but I had to go. <laughs> The hunt for, now it's in my head. Drew in <laughs> neighbors, local law enforcement, and the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Officials from the National Transportation Safety Board earlier had estimated that the park might have landed about six miles west of Portland's downtown. They asked residents to check their doorbell cameras and businesses to look on roofs and were considering using helicopters and drones to assist the search. A local school teacher eventually located the plug in his backyard. Jennifer, Ho Jennifer Homedy? Is that her name? Homedy? Chair of the NTSB said Sunday night, declining to provide his full name. No, but Jen, Jennifer <laughs> Homedy is the chairman, chairperson of the NTSB, not the individual who found the plane park. It may, this is poorly worded. Right, right. Got it. Okay. The piece was used on the plane to plug up a space for an unused door near the back of the aircraft. I don't know. Oh, that's an unused seem... door. Plug it up. It longer. It doesn't seem right, okay? They shouldn't even have to have a door plug. Do you know <laughs> what I'm saying? It's not right. This whole thing is just not right. It ripped off the jet shortly after the flight took off from Portland on Friday evening, terrifying passengers and damaging the interior of the cabin before pilots safely landed the plane. I remember there's a plane when I was flying from when I was leaving my first husband, Steve Zenos. I flew to Guam and the plane that that flew out before me because it lands in Hawaii um, had its door ripped off and. The, one of the flight attendants, I believe, I could be mistaken, but somebody got sucked off the plane into the engine. Yeah. Be when that happened. That, remember that one time, wasn't it an Alaska Airlines flight? If it wasn't, it was, it was not Alaska, it was Hawaii, where the roof of the plane came off and all the passengers were like sucked up through the... Yes, they got sucked out in the middle air. of the ocean. <laughs> oh my God. And this was like when I was leaving my husband flying to Guam and I said, I, I'm going to book a one-way ticket. He was like, one-way ticket? One way ticket to Guam, Penny. I'm like, yes, I'm out of here. So, uh, investigators begin. Uh, investigators have been analyzing the exit door shaped void left in the airplane's side, trying to understand how the plug had separated. Hamadi stressed the importance of finding the piece itself. Okay, so it's Hamadi, not okay. I, I'm seeing the spelling here. Um, stress the importance of finding the piece itself. It's key to have it, she said in an interview on Sunday. 
Finding the part is expected to help investigators as they try to narrow down what went wrong on the Alaska Airlines flight. The probe is still in its early stages with technical specialists set to examine everything from bolts. Remember I told you my ex, he made bolts on right. the door plug that ripped away to a pressurization system on the plane. During the search for the plug, two cell phones that were on the plane also turned up. Okay, that's interesting. Did they say anybody got sucked out? Because we'll just see. Uh, uh -huh. So... At this point, the probe is zeroed in on the Alaska Airlines accident and not on a broader set of aircraft, such as separate versions of the 737 MAX or other planes that have similar door plugs. The focus could change as evidence surfaces about why the part detached. We don't rule out anything at this stage, Hamidi said. The Federal Aviation Administration ordered a temporary grounding and immediate inspections of dozens of Boeing 737 MAX 9 jets. The accident could have been much worse had it happened at cruising altitude with passengers and crew walking around the cabin instead of during the plane's ascent just about 10 minutes from the airport, Hamidi said at a Saturday news conference. And that is most assuredly when people would get sucked out. Among the flight's passengers were four unaccompanied minors, including one who was just five years old, and three babies on laps. How many said flight attendants on the plane took care An of... An unaccompanied five-year-old? Uh, yeah, it says four unaccompanied minors, including one that was five years old. So sometimes what they will do with minors is if your parent, like for instance, in my brother's uh, life, his daughter... Uh, when he got divorced from the mom, the mom went to San Francisco. So they would ship the kid back and forth. So, you know, I, I don't know the age, but yes, including one that was five years old and three babies. I would never trust a five-year-old child on a plane by themselves. I don't care what. Well, Somebody's going with them. I don't yeah, care. Yeah, that's crazy. How many yeah. said flight attendants on the plane took care after the section was ripped away to ensure the younger children were safe? We are very, very fortunate here that this didn't end up in something more tragic, she said Saturday. No one was seated and the two seats next to the door plug that blew out. That's a that. miracle. The MAX 9 is a bigger version of the MAX 8 that was involved in two fatal accidents. Crashes of the smaller MAX 8 in 2018 and 2019 grounded the jets around the world for almost two years. The accidents took 346 lives and drew scrutiny from federal regulators and lawmakers. Mm. In a memo to employees on Sundays, Boeing Chief Executive Dave Calhoun said he and senior executives would gather in Renton, Washington on Tuesday to hold a company-wide webcast to address safety. While we've made progress in strengthening our safety man management and quality control systems and processes in the last few years, situations like this are a reminder that we must remain focused on continuing to improve every day, he wrote. Boeing canceled a planned executive retreat as it raced to determine the cause of Friday's incident and lay out steps to return the grounded plans, planes to flight. Yeah, I bet, because if you're flying to that retreat, you probably don't want to. The piece that was torn off during Friday's flight is used by airlines such as Alaska that have fewer seats and don't need the additional exit. Okay, so that's an additional exit. That's what that was for. It's an exit door plug. Right, oh. exit stage left. An identical door panel on the opposite side of the plane remained intact. Okay, that's just creepy the plug can be open from so here's a here's a picture the plug can be open from the outside for inspection but doesn't operate as a door on planes like the one alaska was flying home and he said other airlines that install extra seats on max nine jets would have an actual emergency exit door placed in that location which is toward the rear of the plane fuselage maker spirit aero systems is responsible for installing the emergency door configuration involved in friday's incident spirit aero systems was working with boeing to determine what went wrong. And uh, finally, my final one, the NTSB will also examine the plane's maintenance and repair logs. An auto pressurization failure light in the plane's cockpit lighted up multiple times in the days leading up to the flight. That's concerning. Homedy said that could have indicated a problem with the system. Yeah, that's what the lights are for. <laughs> or that something was wrong with the light. Oh my God, seriously? Alaska's maintenance tested and reset the lights and restricted the plane from making long flights over water as a precaution. Really? Because the water might actually save you if you land splat on the concrete. No good. No bueno. But Homedy said the issue was described to investigators as benign. Obviously not. The airline had ordered another maintenance look at the light, but that hadn't been completed before Friday's flight. Homedy said it isn't clear if there's any link between the alerts and the incident. I'm going to say... Yes. Uh, 
Well, the Florida Republican Party has voted to oust Chair Christian Ziegler from his leadership position as authorities investigate allegations that Ziegler sexually assaulted a woman previously involved in a three-way relationship with himself and his wife. Good. Oh, wow. <laughs> his name is Christian. <laughs> Come on, uh, my name is Christian Bibby. The, I want to um, do a with my wife. Mom's for liberty. We're gonna liberalize you. And and guess and guess and wait and wait and wait. Guess who his wife is? Mom's for Liberty co-founder Bridget Ziegler. Right. She's a mom for liberty. She's gonna, you know, give you liberty. <laughs> on liberty our to be in an open marriage, I guess. The right? party reportedly voted overwhelmingly to expel Ziegler on Monday because. Probably because they weren't invited to the three-way. Right. The vote comes weeks after the state GOP unanimously voted during an emergency meeting to strip Ziegler of his official duties and lowered his salary as opposed to stripping Ziegler of his clothes and lowering his pants right. to one dollar. One dollar. It just say emergency meeting to strip zipper, not Ziegler. Yeah, I that way, it? <laughs> Days before, reports emerged that Ziegler had requested a multi-million dollar buyout in exchange for his resignation. Oh, oh, that never Ziegler happened. denied that such a request was ever made. He cannot happened. morally lead the Republican Party forward, Vice Chairman Evan Powers said after the December vote. Ziegler had adamantly refused to resign despite calls to step down from prominent Florida lawmakers, including Governor Ron DeSantis and Representative Matt Gates. In late November, Ziegler was accused of sexually assaulting a woman involved in a long-term menage a trois between himself and his wife. According to a police complaint obtained by the Florida Trident, as in tried and true, the sources, <laughs> who, spoke, yeah, I know, the sources who spoke to the outlet um, on condition of anonymity, uh, the woman alleges that Ziegler raped her on October the 2nd while the pair were alone in her home in Sarasota, Florida. The woman told police that she had initially agreed to a sexual encounter with the couple, but backed out after learning that Bridget Ziegler could not be, would not be participating. Oh, Christian Ziegler, really? <laughs> Christian Ziegler allegedly showed up at the woman's residence uninvited and assaulted her. Ziegler has yet to be charged with a criminal offense and denies the allegations of assault, despite admitting to police that the two had sex. According to police documents obtained by Politico, the investigation has also expanded into allegations that Ziegler recorded his alleged assault on the woman without her consent. What? The allegations have also carried professional ramifications for his wife. Bridget Ziegler is not currently under investigation by Sarasota authorities, but the revelations of her and her husband's sexual proclivities have drawn backlash from conservative groups and at least one Moms for Liberty local. Right, they're like, we're for liberty, but not that kind. In December, the Sarasota County, Florida School Board passed a resolution calling for Mrs. Ziegler to resign from her position as a board member. The same month, the Northumberland County, Pennsylvania chapter of Moms for Liberty announced it would be uh, breaking with the oh, national like organization. Our values are not aligning with the national organization. <laughs> <laughs> Clarissa Page, Clarissa explained it all, told the new uh, the news item, adding that it's hard to advocate for parental rights when the co-founder is caught up in a scandal. Oh, my, oh God. my God. This is... Uh, uh, oh, it gets better. So oh, I know. Remember Jonathan Majors? He's the uh, Marvel star. He was yeah. accused of assault. Okay, yeah. uh, and he's out. It says Jonathan Major speaks out on assault conviction, maintains he never hit a woman because he's a superhero. Jonathan Majors is maintaining that there was no physical abuse during his two-year relationship with former girlfriend Grace Jabari during a new interview with Good Morning America that aired Monday, saying he was absolutely shocked and afraid when a jury convicted him of reckless assault in the third degree and harassment. Oh, my Lord. I was shocked. The former Marvel star, 34, continued to insist he didn't know how Jabari, who he met on the set of Ant-Man and the Wasp. <laughs> <laughs> These are high-quality movies. Uh, no. Quantum Mania in summer 
2021 suffered her injuries from a fight that broke out between the couple in March of 2023. Majors was accused of attacking the professional dancer who sustained a fractured finger and a gash behind her ear during the fight. Majors maintained that he was only reckless with her heart, not oh, with her body, wow. repeating that he was not responsible for her injuries. That did not happen. I never slept with that girl. Uh, he said, I wish to God I knew what caused her injury. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, Lord. That would give clarity. That would give me some type of peace about it. Oh, Lord. Yeah, because your career is pretty much over, buddy. Major spoke publicly for the first time about his domestic violence trial, sitting down with ABC News anchor Lindsay Davis in a pre-taped interview. Pre-taped always good because you can just say, no, stop. I want to do that again. I wasn't convincing yeah. enough because right. I'm an actor. That's right. Um, the appearance comes before Majors is due back in court on February 6th for sentencing, where he faces up to a year behind bars. Yeah, he's sorry for sure. The actor addressed a Rolling Stone report from June 2023 that detailed how Majors allegedly physically and or emotionally abused two previous romantic partners, which that's what we call an M.O. and a pattern, according to a dozen sources. Who knew the woman? Majors allegedly strangled one woman. Oh, that was just a mistake. My hands ended up around her neck. He was dating and was mentally and emotionally abusive with her. Nine of those sources claim. The second woman allegedly told friends that her relationship with Majors was emotional torture. And there were wo moments of near violence where he would get filled with rage and hit something or punch a wall. That sounds like... He sure didn't engage in violence, right? right. Uh, in okay, I think I already read this. Let me see. No, maybe I didn't. In the GMO, in the GMA interview, Majors denied that he was ever abusive in any relationship, saying that although he has witnessed domestic abuse because he was actually part of it, he's never participated in it. <laughs> I've been smacked at before, but never exercised it. Major said, "I don't even know what that means." Those relationships went back to when I was 21, 22 years old, and I just think, was I a jerk? Was I a mean guy? Yeah, knowing what I know now, like, oh, severe depression, childhood trauma. I have had very few relationships, so I can gather what situations we're talking about. Yeah, I was not the best boyfriend at the time, but I'll never hit a woman. My hands have never struck a woman, ever. So maybe strangling doesn't, he's thinking that's not the same thing. Uh, in a statement regarding Major's interview, Jabari's attorney, Brittany Henderson, tells Rolling Stone it's not at all surprising that Mr. Majors continues to take no accountability for his actions. His denigration of our jury system is not dissimilar from above the law attitude that he's maintained throughout his legal process. The timing of these new statements demonstrates a clear lack of remorse for the actions for which he was found guilty and should make the sentencing decisions fairly easy for the court. David? <laughs> Had enough rape allegations? Well, we have another one for you. Samuel Theis, or Thies, who played the husband of Sandra Huller's character in Justine Triet's Golden Globe winning film, Anatomy of a Fall. Yeah, he's taking a fall right now. Was ousted from the shoot of his third directorial outing, Je Jure, after being accused of rape by a crew member. Variety has confirmed. For the remainder of production, uh, he's, he's out. Thais remained on location, but directed the film remotely. So what, he was just kicked off the set? The I alleged, guess. You can, direct, you can direct, but you got to do it via Zoom. Right. The, alleged <laughs> sexual, the, alleged, the alleged sexual assault took place halfway through the shoot in the aftermath of a party held in an apartment with the cast and crew on July the 1st, according to the French newspaper Liberation. The crew members spent the night in the flat where the party was held due to his state of inebriation and alleged he was raped by, oh, he, he, he. Oh, okay. feast In the early morning hours. The filmmaker, meanwhile, has argued that it was consensual, according to Liberation. <laughs> Shortly after the crew member decided to leave the shoot, Jet Toujours, producer Carol Marchand, told Variety that the after learning of the alleged incident, she tapped a third-party organization to conduct an internal investigation within the cast and crew. During the ongoing probe, Bon Marchand held meetings to come up with a preemptive solution, which was to remove Thies physically from the set and have it directed remotely. Thies would come in the morning before the start of the shoot to lay everything out and would go to another room. <laughs> bon Marchand said actors could come to him if they needed to, and Thies would communicate with crew members via 
monitors. So bon this is like the ultimate in hands off. It looks like he used his bone marchand, who has attended a workshop to prevent sexual harassment <laughs> and assault on set as part of the National Film Board's rules to seek subsidies. So the protocol allowed the production to be completed despite. Oh, okay. So the that's the thing. So if you if you attend a workshop, then you can keep your production going. I guess so. Crew members were also given the possibility to speak to a psychologist. Right. This never see, happened. You never saw the, this. Shoot ended later in July, and according to Telerama magazine, which is a Telerama, he's telling everything. A police complaint against these, but this is attorney Marie Dosse told Variety she isn't aware of an official complaint and what? has not been contacted about an ongoing investigation. At the time of publication, Variety was unable to access the complaint. The only investigation on this case was ordered by the production and carried out by an independent organization. It was That's delivered weird. in September. It was 300 pages long. Uh, the conclusion is that there were no elements qualifying what happened of a sexual assault. Say wow. She added that the report included a witness who had entered the bedroom, Thies and the accuser were in, and described it as a... Oh, God. Oh, Dick, God. Dick Tijur, Stars several non-professional actors as well as major French stars such as Marina Foy and Louise Bourgoin. Marlon Marchand is one of France's best-known producers. Her company, Avenue B Productions, is behind a number of recent hits, including Sebastian Manier's The Origin of Evil. And okay, that, this, <laughs> this unfortunately, is, this. is where we're going to have to leave it. because right, we'll, The Origin we'll, of Evil would be the director that they forced off the set, and then they did their own investigation, like the police investigating them own selves. How does that happen? I don't know, but we will we will continue to follow this story and all the other rape stories that we bring you in our Hollywood <laughs> And we will pick Tuesday. this up again tomorrow <laughs> with another edition of the Awake Nation News. Please also join us uh, Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Central, 9 to noon Eastern on our Rumble channel, the David Zublik channel, for our television show, The Awake Nation. You can get everything all at one website now, theawakenation.com. That's going to do it for this edition of the Awake Nation News. We are out of news, so we are out of here. Zublik out. Shepherd out.